Hello and welcome back. And in this video, we are going to be learning about Spring animations in SwiftUI. Animations are native to SwiftUI and they are they can be created as easy as everything else in the world of SwiftUI. Now, SwiftUI animations are interactive and today we are going to be exploring Spring animation. Before we start, I want to show you what we are going to be building in this video. Okay, so we're going to have this scene where we have sun and this uh, kind of like a green road out and the uh, sun is out it's a uh, daytime and as soon as we tap on the view night turns in and we have this uh, moon uh, nicely animating and the roads turn gray and as you can see both of these animations play very nicely now there's one thing you would notice that i i, exp I just mentioned that swiftia animations are interactive what does that mean? So animations don't have to complete their uh, full cycle. They can be interrupted in between and new animation can start and can go to the finish line if it's not interrupted. If that is interrupted, the next animation continues to move forward until it is either interrupted or finished. Let me show you an example. So when the sun is gonna come out, I'm gonna interrupt it and gonna tap again quickly to turn the day into night. As you can see, our sun did not even get chance to basically come out and we turned the uh, scene into a night scene. So let's go ahead and try it one more time. I'm gonna do it really fast and you're gonna see that our none of our animations are actually getting chance to complete. But as we let it go, it actually finishes the animation. So this is what animations being interactive mean. Okay, now with that, let's go ahead and get started to create this experience and learn about spring animation. Okay, so we'll start with the scene setup. And for that, we're gonna create a computed property, which is gonna be, which is gonna be uh, holding the view for our scene, okay? And we are also going to create a state variable which is going to help us uh, essentially like private uh, yeah so uh, we're going to create a, a state variable which is going to help us control the state between the day and night and we're going to it's going to be a simple boolean variable and we're going to call it show okay so add state private bar show and we're gonna set it to um, true okay um next what we're gonna do actually let's set it to false um, yeah false okay next what we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a computer property just like body but we're gonna create our own computer property and we're gonna make it private so private var scene which is gonna return some view okay now this scene is going to host uh, basically an image a z stack for our sun and moon and then a few rectangles to display that bottom part which was uh, which was that road divider and road or like you know field whatever you want to call it okay so we're gonna basically have a v stack inside the v stack we're gonna have a z stack and uh, i'm gonna change this to basically call our scene okay and uh, our scene does not contain anything right now so let's go ahead and create an image inside the z stack with sun.max.fill okay so that's basically one of uh, our uh, ss symbol that, uh, that we are using and i'm going to make this resizable so i can increase the size of this guy and i'm going to say the frame for this is going to be width of 100 and height of 100 points okay and uh, we also want to color this so let's go ahead and define the foreground style and we're going to use radial gradient color overload and we're going to color this with orange at the center and yellow we're going to say the gradient is going to start from the center the start radius is going to be zero and the end radius is going to be 70 points okay so basically the the moon uh, sorry the sun 
part, uh, the, the circular part is going to be orange color. And this part is going to be a shade of like, you know, yellow gradient turning yellow. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to position this using position modifier. So position X and Y, and we're going to basically toggle this position based on the show property. Okay. So we're going to say if the show is true, uh, make the uh, X, Y position as 250 and Y as 250. Okay. So that's, that's the show and it is true. And uh, when show is, wait a minute, let's do, okay, let's do this. Let's do 150. Okay. And negative thousand. Okay. Show is going to be basically in the night time. So for the show, when it is false, which is the current state, uh, we're going to show 150 and Y value 250. Okay. So our sun is going to appear right, like, you know, right right here like in the sun not really in the center but like you know a little bit off center all right uh we're gonna do the same thing for the moon so instead of typing the whole thing i'm gonna copy this and i'm gonna paste it i'm gonna change this to 250 for the x position and we're gonna change this guy to moon dot fill okay and um what we're gonna do is uh you're gonna make it maybe white and uh, let's uh, see, yeah, maybe blue. Okay, um, yeah, let's leave it white. Actually, let's not give it a gradient. Let's use just simple white color. Now this is not gonna be visible right now. So, uh, for that reason, let's do it red. Um, I'm just gonna turn it in uh, white in a minute. What we wanna do is we wanna toggle or we wanna swap these places. So when the show is true, okay, then we wanna show the moon because that's the night time. So I'm gonna put it right here and gonna cut this and gonna paste it right here, okay? And uh, we're gonna turn this into white, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is uh, for the background, we can actually turn the whole background as a uh, black and white color and we're gonna toggle between those two states. And for that, what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put our scene in Z stack. So let's go on the top, put the scene inside a Z stack. And uh, right before the scene, we're gonna actually create a rectangle and we're gonna fill this rectangle based on the show value. You're gonna say just use color dot black um, black when uh, the show is true and color dot white when the show is false. Okay, so we can turn it into true and see the difference. Um, there we go. Okay, so our moon is showing up, but it's not taking over the entire uh, screen. So. Let's go ahead and set ignore safe area and uh, that's going to turn the entire screen, uh, all the edges, basically uh, the same color. Okay. Now, once we have this, uh, what we're going to do while we are here, we are also going to attach on tap gesture. Okay. And we're going to toggle the show. Okay. This way, whenever we are tapping, you're actually seeing those two states being changed. This way we can basically um, test our code, our logic out, all right? Now, next thing is uh, we wanna draw those rectangles. Now those uh, rectangles are super easy. So I'm gonna just copy and paste with a spacer and we're gonna copy and paste it right underneath the Z stack. We're done with the Z stack. And I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna format it okay so let's go ahead and try this out so as you can see this is our scene it is created and it's ready to be animated okay so spring animation is created using spring instance method and it takes few parameters to customize the behavior the default behavior for the spring animation is to add bounds to your view now bounce is very subtle but it adds interesting effect to your views. 
Okay, now so what we're going to do is uh, we are going to add this into an example. So let's create another variable. And I'm going to create another computer property. Yeah. And uh, we're going to call this example one. I'm going to have like you know, a few examples. So that's why I'm going to use example one in this case. And I'm going to say scene and just add animation here. So scene.animation, we're going to simply say spring. And animation takes a value which is an equatable value. So it can be any like you know native type or your custom type as long as it conforms to the equatable protocol. Our show is actually a perfect candidate for this. So show is gonna have uh, show is gonna basically conform to that. Now what we're gonna do is instead of calling directly scene, we're gonna call example here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try it. And as you can see our animation is playing our sun and moon they are positioned with animation but the background is changing rather abruptly so let's go ahead and add an animation to the background as well and i'm going to add spring animation and we're not going to touch this after we actually create this because like all the other experiments we're going to do um, those experiments are going to be on the scene and not on the background okay so once we have the animation set for our background, let's go ahead and try it out. So as you can see, now the, the change is very subtle. We are not only changing the background using animation, we are also animating our sun and moon view. So the entire scene is now animated using the spring animation. Okay, so remember I told you like, you know, there are a few parameters that spring animation takes. Well, one of them is called damping fraction so spring animation takes damping fraction as a parameter and it can be used to control the spring behavior now damping fraction is a double type and it can be any value between zero and one now lower the value meaning more bounds your spring is going to have and higher the value that means more stiffer your spring is going to be it's, gonna, it's not going to have much bounce in it the default damping fraction value is 0 0.825 according to the documentation. So let's go ahead and create a bouncy string, a bouncy spring. I'm gonna copy this and paste this example one into example two, and I'm gonna change this to example two, okay? And we're gonna add a damping fraction as a parameter. Okay, now let's change this to 0 0.3, which is gonna add some bounds to the um, to the spring. So let's go ahead and try this out. As you can see, our views are super bouncy. Now we can control this by setting this to a different value. So let's set 0 0.5. As you can see, it goes beyond where it's supposed to land, and then it comes back slowly, bouncing back to its position. Okay, so that's the bounce effect. Now, you can change the value to 1.0, which is the maximum value, and that's gonna remove all the bounce. So as you can see, this is the almost kind of like a default behavior. Although 0 0.8 has a slight bounce uh, on the spring versus the damping function 1.0. Okay, very subtle. Now, setting damping, fraction, damping fraction to zero, meaning the spring will bounce forever. So if you ever to just um, set this to zero, and let's go ahead and try this out. As you can see, it's gone crazy now. So I'm gonna change it to one and uh, kinda save it. So we actually don't go crazy behind this. All right, um, spring animation does not have um, basically a duration parameter, but it has a response parameter, which acts very close to animation duration. And you can use it to control the duration of your animation, how long your animation is playing. The default value for this is 0 0.55. Now we can set this. So let's go ahead and set 0 0.5 as damping fraction. And I'm gonna set the response as 10 points. Now I might have these in different order. So let's go ahead and fix the order. Okay, there we go. Um, actually, you know what? I should have copied this. So let's go ahead and command Z. Okay, and I'm gonna paste it. Example three. 
example three. Okay, let's go ahead and try this one out. So our animation is playing slowly. So that's the duration. And as you can see, our view is taking its time to go settle its in place by bouncing a little bit and like, you know, then settling there. All right, so that's, it's gonna take 10 seconds. I'm gonna change it to five and um, it's gonna make it a little bit faster. But it's gonna still play. So let's set it to two, which is gonna make it a pretty, pretty decent animation. All right. All right, so there's one more parameter that uh, we're gonna basically explore uh, before wrapping this up. Uh, so there is a blend duration. Now blend duration for the spring animation is basically defined as a duration in seconds over which the interpolation changes to the response value of the spring. Okay, and we can, we can basically try that out by specifying blend duration and let's set the blend duration to be uh, 0.8. So during this interpolation changes, how long these interpolation changes from one state to another takes, that's what blend, blend duration actually uh, helps us with, okay? So let's go ahead and save this and this is basically the effect that we get. Uh, if you notice right here, your colors are like, you know, changing over that duration over that period of time. So look at the color for the road and you're gonna notice a slight tint purple uh, that's basically taking place, all right? So with that, we have reached the end of this video and these are all the things that, all the parameters that are supported with spring animation and basically in this video, you learn how to create spring animation using a real example by building a real scene, okay? All right, so, with that, thank you so much once again for watching and I will see you guys in another video. Thank you.